we understand uh, that the district has, has had some financial difficulties. What we're going to talk about tonight is a possibility of, of, of a project that might assist that. Uh, I think that this is one of those cases where the boundaries of individual districts within a community disappear. And when a, a community has an issue, an opportunity, uh, this is where I, I sense it's all hands on deck. It, it's not an issue of, uh, well, this is a village issue, or this is a District 67 issue, or a library issue, or, or a uh, uh, park district issue. This, this is a Morton Grove issue, and that's why we're all here tonight. Uh, the other factor, obviously, if, if we were in Fat City uh, and, and resources were unlimited, uh, we probably wouldn't be here tonight. So what we're going to talk about tonight is uh, uh, an opportunity. Uh, it's something for cons consideration. We have a, an automot automotive dealership, automobile dealership, that is interested in purchasing this site. Uh, there are some benefits that may come to that. As, as, uh, as you're aware, you, you've done a number of things and, and cut and, and make the budget and so forth, but this might be an opportunity to restructure operations and, and combine the golf school facility with Heinz School, and that's not uncommon in Wharton Grove. I think it was probably 20 years ago or so uh, that was done at, in Parkview. And Parkview, my understanding, is, has about 800 students under one roof. I understand that uh, District 67 between the two schools is about 600. So it is doable. I mean, it's something that you're, you certainly have a tough job ahead of you to consider all things. Um, but um, this, this may be a, a rare and unique opportunity. But I also want to stress it's not uncommon. And what we're going to talk about tonight is the possible use of tax increment financing fund funding to, to assist this project. Um, now, um, maybe just to, to uh, back up a step, um, the dealership has, has issued a letter of interest in purchasing the site. We have an appraisal of this property that values at it roughly about $9 million. Now, it's our understanding the architect is here tonight, but it would take about $17, $18 million to relocate golf school to Heinz School uh, and really build a state-of-the-art facility and also refurbish the existing facility that, that you have. Uh, my understanding is this, this property was developed about the mid-60s or so. Um, all of you that live in this area, you know that our suburbs are getting older. There aren't a lot of new schools, and I think for good reason, because it costs about 17 or $18 million. So this may be the financial engine that could, could make this work. The sale of the property is roughly about $9 million. That is not enough to, to make it. So there's another financial model that we're going to present tonight um, that, that I think would cover this. We, uh, where, where this becomes fortuitous is the location of golf school is it borders the Waukegan Road tip. So, um, under Illinois state law, uh, what could be done is. Well, you, excuse me, but sure. Do you want to come up here and we can try to hold okay. it together? Okay. Very um, good. Maybe that would help you. Um, this light over here, maybe. Okay, very good. All right, we're going to see where we're at. We're here. Okay, you are. <laughs> okay. Uh, golf School borders the Waukegan Road Tax Increment Financing District. State law allows that if you. Um, have a, a what would be considered a, a TIFable project, a, a project that's eligible for TIF funding, you can use the funding from the, the bordering TIF district. So that meets the first criteria. 
If we were a mile away, we'd be out of luck. Um, but, but this works. The second component is consideration is uh, the village could provide an individual TIF solely for this property and use funding from, from that. Now, without any one of these three sources, and the three sources are the sale of the property, the extension of the Waukegan Road Tax Improvement Financing District, and under state law, that's an extension of 12 years, as well as a new tax increment financing district solely for this property, now we have the resources to relocate the school to the hindsight. There are other costs involved. The, as you are aware, the park district has uh, a lease on the property to the rear of Golf School, and they had development costs. Uh, my understanding is they had a, uh, a received a grant from the state for approximately four hundred thousand dollars. That would be an obligation that would have to be repaid, as well as the the cost to the park district. Um, I, I've had conversations with the park district. They're trying to get a handle on it. I've heard estimates anywhere. I think at one time uh, at, at the groundbreaking, they thought it's maybe eight hundred thousand dollars they put in. I've heard other other uh, estimates of two point five million. Okay, there's a large range there, but what counts is what what an auditor would go through and say. Okay, uh, this is a, a cost of um, uh, this is an acceptable cost. This works. So it's it's somewhere within that range. But that's that's something to work through. The other part of, um, of the transaction is a portion of the TIF uh, to the auto dealer. They will have some cost, demolition of this building, um, uh, environmental costs, possible public improvements such as detention, probably looking at a, at a cost model there of about $1.5 million. The, so this model, I think, has uh, <coughs> some great benefits to consider. And one is, first of all, it helps District 67 restructure operations, uh, the, the physical plant, and, and also financially. This would go a long way. I, I, I've had a number of uh, conversations with uh, Dr. Riley, and um, uh, I know there's concern within this building as well as in Heinz, at the Heinz building about uh, the condition of the roof, condition of the heating, ventilation, and air conditioning system, all of those things. I go back to my point about all of our suburbs are getting older, and it's very easy for a 50-year-old school building to become a 75-year-old building or a 100-year-old building, and now you start to look at it similar to the, the uh, schools that are in, in the inner city, which are being replaced and which are being replaced with the use of tax increment financing. So while this deal may seem a little bit complicated, it is not uncommon. And if structured correctly, I think there may be a win-win for everybody. The other part of it um, is economic development for the village of Morton Grove. When you say the village, that means everybody. I recognize that a TIF is that does not mean free money. Ultimately, that's coming from taxpayers, and there's an impact on taxpayers. However, it's really the only vehicle to come up with 17, 18 million dollars to do large-scale public projects such as a school. So there is an opportunity here. Um, in my business, communities all across America talk about uh, almost ad nauseum economic development and intergovernmental cooperation. And oftentimes, it's, we play, pay lip service to it. It's like motherhood and apple pie. But this is a real opportunity that's within our grasp. And it's something that for strong consideration, both by the uh, school board as well as the village of Morton Grove. And it's a chance to really say, is this, is this something that's just words, or is this something that you actually uh, take action with? So with that, I'm going to ask, there's, there's two other parts of the village's presentation tonight. I'm going to ask John Said, our Director of Community Development, to, uh, to kind of go over exactly what, what is TIF or Tax Increment Financing, um, what are the parameters, and then I'm also going to ask our, uh, our Village Finance Director, Ryan Horn, and he's going to go over uh, some of the economics specific to this situation. And we're also available for questions tonight, too.